Good morning, folks. We've got news from beneath our feet to way above our heads, including yet another paper pointing back to planets in chaos. Let's begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star were very calm once again. Big coronal hole turning in and divided by the bright umbral magnetic fields of the lone sunspot on the disk. Solar flaring remains flatlined as the Earth-facing solar quiet effect has been utterly dominating this grouping facing Earth, its growth and morphing have ceased, and the split polarity situation remains with large umbras failing to interact in close quarters. Solar wind here. Indeed, no scary readings, but there is also a lack of stability as we jitter back and forth. And there was a 200 degree phi angle shift over the course of about an hour last night, so the KP is up off the floor. The next fast stream is coming out of this coronal hole. But before it arrives, you'll remember yesterday we said it ramps up the earthquake watch and we needed to go on alert immediately. Within just a few hours of yesterday's news, it struck. The Philippines with their first rumble since taking a 7-pointer weeks ago, death toll already up to 15. And folks, this was a rare miss for the disaster prediction app and the forecasting model. Noting the misses is as important as noting the hits. And the streak of consecutive earthquakes hit in a row was creeping close to our longest ever, after we hadn't missed an earthquake since December 29th. For those keeping up with the stats, we had updated the chart at quakewatch.net. Before yesterday's event, we were up to 84%. Remember, based on historical records, we should only expect 70 to 80% success. This latest event drops us from 84 to 80.8%. Top news begins with Juno's latest Jupiter. Incredible photo makes me anxious to get deeper dives towards the atmosphere because boy oh boy, that looks like condensed matter, just like our star via SDO. South Pole surrounded by Jupiter spots, not unlike we see back on our planet. Up next, a composite image of radio, infrared, and x-rays reveals the moment of disk collapse and star birth with a bursting cosmic jet. Actually, I'm just kidding, this is stem cells dividing, but... Makes you think about universal scalability, doesn't it? Get your mind right. Up next, we're looking at the MMS mission studying the magnetic field of our planet. Date stamps are across the bottom, and what we're going to be seeing over the next few months is a transition from sunlit side study to peripheral and dark side studies. The craft will slowly take its loops longer and wider and point it away from the sun to spend an extended apogee to study variability in the shield over short time scales. Last but not least, Yet again, folks, we've got scientists saying we better rethink what our solar system used to look like. As always, there is a seemingly profound indictment of gravity in these scenarios, but never resonance or electromagnetism. Oh well. Anyway, folks, much of the U.S. enjoys some warm weather right now while the snow does keep falling across the north and across the pond. The unusually cold winter in the eastern block marches on. And once again, we'll jump over to Taiwan where the cold hasn't broken yet and people are still dying. Last year it was unthinkable in a nation that has no heating, just AC, to have so many people die from cold and it's happening again this year. It is Saturday, so our weekly podcast is coming up in just a few hours at suspiciousobservers.org. Right now we've got pressure and radar forecast, a null school global run, and shots of our star to close. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.